Greetings, everybody. Turn your King James Bible to the book of Jeremiah. We're going to do chapter 18. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jeremiah is a pretty interesting book. And I, it's kind of, to me, it's depressing. It really is. I mean, it talks about judgment, but you know what? It talks about restoration and reconciliation to an extent for the remnant anyways. So with that in mind, Jeremiah 18. Verse 1. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise. And go down to the potter's house, and there will I cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. Oh, uh, all right. Well, what does that mean? Well, have you ever seen pottery being made? If you haven't, just go to YouTube and type in uh, making pottery. You take clay, and maybe you shape it into a bowl, and you put it on a wheel. It's kind of like a wood lathe in a way, except for it's uh, vertical instead of horizontal. And uh, then you take the item, and basically you bake it, and you have pottery. So, oh, that's what a potter is. You know, I was just thinking, why do they call him Harry Potter, the, the wizard, the sorcerer, the witch? Huh. Now, forgive me if I uh, go into these explanations, but, you know, you got to realize there might be people listening that, don't know how pottery is made so you know all right verse four and the vessel that he made of clay was marred or damn it you know i don't know if it's damaged but it wasn't uh it wasn't up to standards and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hands of the potter so he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, verse 6, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? Saith the Lord, behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it? Oh boy, when I read this, I'm thinking of the USSA. United Socialist States America. At what instance, at what instant, I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it. If that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil. I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. So, if the Lord pronounces judgment against a wicked nation and they turn from their wickedness, God will God will leave them alone. He'll repent of their destruction. Verse 9. And at one instant... I shall speak concerning a nation 
and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it. Isn't that what happened to America a few hundred years ago? Yeah. Verse 10. If it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. I've heard people that uh, consider themselves Bible scholars that say, oh, America was never a Christian nation. Well, nations cannot be Christian. People in a nation can be Christian. And America was founded on Christianity. I could show you state constitutions where it says only Christians should be allowed only Christians would be allowed to hold public office. And they had to make a public profession of their faith. So technically, a lot of these uh, dual citizens that plague our land are technically illegal passing all these laws. I wish we could go back and repeal all the laws that these dual citizens have made for the last, oh, I don't know, 100-something years. But that's not going to happen. Now, there have been non-believers and there has been infiltrators, but there's a lot of constitutional uh, states state constitutions that uh, you had to make a professional Christian faith to be in public office, period. Matter of fact, during the founding of this country with the Constitution, they voted on a constitutional amendment to ban the you-know-whos from the United States. Do you know that constitutional amendment failed by one vote? One vote. I'm sure they were paid quite well, those that voted against it. And now we're paying for it. But, uh, you know, let's face it. I think America had a lot of believers and God bless this country but that was a long time ago that was a long time ago verse 10 if it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. Now, therefore, go to speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I frame evil against you and devise a device against you. Return ye now every one from his evil way, and make your ways and your doings good. And they said, There is no hope, but we will walk after our own devices, and we will everyone do the imagination of his evil heart. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Ask ye now among the heathens, who hath heard such things? The Virgin of Israel hath done a very horrible thing. Will a man leave the snow of Lebanon, which cometh from the rock of the field? Or shall the cold flowing waters that come from another place 
be forsaken? Because my people have forgotten me. They have burnt incense to vanity. And they have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths. To walk in paths in a way not cast up. So what were the ancient paths? Well, God's Ten Commandments, right? And they have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths to walk in paths in a way not cast up, to make their land desolate and a perpetual hissing Every one that passeth thereby shall be astonished and wag his head. I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy. I will show them the back and not the face in the day of their calamity. Uh, basically, the Lord's saying, I'm going to turn my back on them in the day of their calamity. I'm going to turn my back on them. They turn their back on me. I'm going to turn my back on them. They're not going to see my face. I'm out of here. Verse 18. Then said they, come and let us devise devices against Jeremiah. Ooh. We don't like this message, so we're going to do something to the messenger. Then said they, Come and let us devise devices against Jeremiah. For the law shall not perish from the priest, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Oh, yeah. They got a bunch of sellout priests. A bunch of dumb wise men and lying prophets, false prophets. And they think, oh, well, we're good. We're good. Come and let us devise devices against Jeremiah. For the law shall not perish from the priest, nor counsel from the wise nor the word from the prophet. Come and let us smite him with the tongue and let us not give heed to any of his words. Yeah, don't listen to Jeremiah. What does he know? Verse 19. Give heed to me, O Lord, and hearken to the voice of them that contend with me. Contending, you know, fighting and arguing. Verse 20, shall evil be recompensed for good? For they have digged, for they have digged a pit for my soul. Remember that I stood before thee to speak good for them and to turn away thy wrath from them. Jeremiah actually stood up to the Lord to make intercession for them. Just like Moses did with Israel when they made the golden calf. But instead of them appreciating it, they want to kill him. They dug a pit for his soul. Verse 21. Therefore, deliver up their children to the famine and pour out their blood by the force of the sword. And let their wives be bereaved of their children and be widows. And let the men, and let their men be put to death. Let their young men be slain by the sword in battle. Let a cry be heard from their houses when thou shalt bring a troop suddenly upon them. 
a troop of soldiers, right? When thou shalt bring a troop suddenly upon them, for they have digged a pit to take me and hid snares for my feet. What's a snare? It's a trap. They hid a trap by his feet to catch him. Jeremiah, that is. Verse 23. Yet, Lord, thou knowest all their counsel against me to slay me. Forgive not their iniquity, neither blot out their sin from thy sight, but let them be overthrown before thee. Deal thus with them in the time of thine anger. Oh boy. Sounds like uh, pretty much a done deal, don't it? All right, well, that's the end of this chapter. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor, God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, all glory and honor to Him. Amen.